We're going to start doing some change work. We're going to start working with um, the, some of the things you guys mentioned you want to work on. Okay? We're going to do this in a very specific way. I thought about going like real neuro-linguistic on you guys, but I think because I want to have you guys get a little bit more used to doing things your own way, that we're going to, we're going to take a hypnotist approach to this. So we're going to be working with a special conversational hypnosis induction. And we're going to do some preliminary work before we, we actually do it. But um, the name of the induction has two. Stacking realities. AKA five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> now he's got to think about that every time he says that. Hmm? Hmm? Now, the way this works is it's, it's based on a concept called pacing and leading. How many of you actually know what pacing? what a pace is and what a lead is. Uh, like you dance? Well, what is a pace in dance? Uh, pace is that uh, you're, following, uh, you're following the music, according to the rhythm of the music, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you're just following the pace and then you're following the steps. And okay. As long as you're doing that, you're doing okay. In this context, no. That's not what a pace is. Um, <clears throat> so your name, your name is David, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, you're an adult, correct? Okay, you're showing me what a pace. That's actually not pace, but that's it's so, so. That's not pacing. There, therefore, therefore, you have adult responsibilities, correct? Isn't no. That what it is? No. I thought that like you like get something that you can lead them into like. What was my question? What is a know, pace? What what is pace? What is a pace? Okay. A what pace is, is something that's um, viewed as true. Okay. If we're going to start working in uh, terminology, uh, we really need to understand what we're dealing, what we're talking about. In in the context in which Eric learned pacing, the concept of pace has to do with the tempo, the rhythm, and the speed of the music. Tangentially related, but not specific enough to what we're doing. Okay. A pace, from our, for our perspective, is anything in the environment, or actually anything that is sensorily or cognitively verifiable as true. It's a truism. Either a truism that we can verify through our five senses, or something that we can, through our awareness, internally directed or externally directed, verify. Okay? Give me an example of a pace based on this criteria, Eric. Um, I believe in God. No. Um, uh, something that is. Uh, uh, A rose no sweet. Okay. Is there anything in this room that is a pace? You're sitting on a chair. I'm sitting on a chair. Yeah. Can we verify that he's sitting on a chair? Mm -hmm. Bet your butt. Barbara, give me another another element or phenomena that is verifiably true. Any object in the room. The, the TV. The TV is what? The TV is sitting on the trunk. This TV is sitting on the trunk. Notice how simple it was, but yet when you come to actually describe it, you have to actually think about it a little bit. Give me another pace. Well, I mean, the thing is, we're here to learn about paces and leads, but the question is, why is that map over there? What the hell is that? <laughs> that was a pace and a lead. 
What was the question? What was the res what was the, the, the was we're all here what, 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 about faces and leads? Are we? Well, we are right now. Is that why we're here? Is that something? Is that a pace or is that a lead? Part of it would be we're all here. That's a pace. The lead would be to learn about X, right? We are all here, at least physically, right? Okay. Let's be really, really specific and precise with our terms. Okay. As as a hypnotist, language, and the specificity and the vagueness of it are our stock in trade. We no longer deal in just random specificity and vagaries. We have to know what we mean and why we mean it, even when we're trying to be vague. Okay, does that make sense? So when we pace, a pace must be something that we can verify. When you're communicating a pace to another person, it must be something they can verify. For instance, Barbara, you're sitting here looking at me, listening to my words, and you're having certain thoughts about those words. <laughs> I'm not sure about that one. <laughs> <laughs> right? Were you, in fact, sitting here? Yes, I'm sitting here. Were you listening to what I was saying? I was listening. Okay. Were you, in fact, having certain thoughts? No. <laughs> it's <was> pretty blank. <laughs> okay. But actually, the fact, the moment she went inside and started looking for a thought, that's a thought. Right? So you can verify it. Okay. Is that, was all of that a pace? Most of it was a pace, yeah. Okay. So as you're sitting here listening to me speak, noticing how I'm talking, paying attention to my voice inflections, and wondering where I'm going with all this. That was a lead. Mm -hmm. And notice how your mind went there. Mm -hmm. Right? The magic of paces is that every time we... Res this goes back to critical factor bypass. Uh, you'll remember in some of the earlier sessions I've, I've described our critical factor as being this little man that gets a message and then runs back to the filing cabinet to find out if there's something that corresponds with that. When we start pacing, we start sending the little man back, and he keeps, ver he keeps finding truisms. And after a while, he stops running back and forth and just starts saying, well, everything they've said so far is true, so everything else must be true. Right? So the critical factor goes away. Okay? And then after a while, the little man can't tell the difference between what's a pace and what's a lead. He accepts everything, or she accepts everything, based on what we say. Okay? A lead is anything we want them to do. So, before we go into the actual induction, I like to prime the pump a little bit and get our brains kind of working into cataloging paces cataloging leads. So what I want you to do is on a piece of paper <coughs> I want you to write down 15 discrete paces for this environment. Fifteen things that are sensorily or cognitively verifiable is true. And then I want you to write down fifteen leads. Fifteen things you might want somebody to believe, to think, to say, to pay attention to. Something they want them to do. The secret to this is to make the leads very, very simple, very, very easy, okay, and in many cases, somewhat related to each other. So, for instance, you might say, as you're sitting here listening to the sound of my voice, hearing the cadence of my words and the meanings behind those words, and even though they're impacting you neurologically as well as auditorily, you might begin to wonder how all this 
is going to come together. And as you begin to wonder how all that's coming together, you may feel yourself starting to feel a little bit more relaxed. You could possibly notice that the sensations in your left earlobe become more pronounced, even though you weren't paying attention to them before. Now you are. And as you pay attention to the left earlobe, all of a sudden the right earlobe begs for attention. And as you notice that, your body continues to relax even more. <laughs> right? So the magic of pacing and leading is when we start naming things in the environment that are true. The unconscious mind starts to paint everything with that brush. As long as the leads are plausible, small enough that they're not too far out. So if I were to say, you're sitting here listening to the sound of my voice, hearing my words, wondering possibly what I'm going to say next, and feeling tremendously horny. <laughs> See the difference? It's, it's, way, it's, it's out. way out of proportion. It's not related directly. This is where people screw up when they try to do hypnotic suggestion, uh, hypnotic copywriting, or anything like that. They skip transitions. They skip the incremental change. You can take anybody from a north direction to a south direction if you just slice it small enough. You make the transition easy, natural, conversational, and you intersperse them with more leap, with more paces. Okay? This has a slight fractionation effect as well because you're pacing, you're pacing, you're pacing, you're leading. Right? So, all of a sudden you're pacing, you're pacing, you're pacing, you're leading. You're, you're, and your lead is stronger then? The leads, well, as we get into the induction, you'll see how it all fits together. Okay. okay? But the secret here is we need to start thinking in paces and leads. So, take however long it is you need to take, write down 15 things that are sensorially or verifiably true, and 15 leads. And then I'll show you how to structure it so you can begin to play. Okay. To review, this is how I want you to organize. Pace, 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 lead. Pace, 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 lead, lead. Pace, 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 lead, lead, lead. And of course, pace, pace, lead, 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 lead. And we're going to go pace, lead, 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 lead. Lead, and then it's just lead, 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 lead. Okay? So as you sit here listening to the sound of my voice, watching me click my marker up and down, wondering what my next pace is going to be, you can begin to notice how I'm pacing. And as you notice how I'm pacing, <laughs> you can begin to wonder what I'm going to do next. So much so as you feel the weight of your body in the chair, and you're looking at me, and you're noticing the subtle nuances, and you're paying more and more attention to what I'm doing. Maybe even trying to figure out what I'm going to do next. You may begin to realize that I'm simply following the formula on the board by describing things that you know are true. Am I not? Describing things that you know are true. And as you continue to nod and you realize I'm describing things that you know I'm true or are true, you can begin to realize that after a while what's arguably or verifiably true versus what I tell you is simply the way things are starts to blur a little bit. They all start to have the same level of truth to them. And as the truth of what I'm doing to you begins to just sink in, you can find yourself relaxing more. Letting yourself just let go, because there's another part of your mind that's paying attention. Another part of your mind that knows how to learn things quickly. That's right. <sighs> You're evil. 
I think you, you were doing a lot, a lot more leads than you had written down, no? How would you know? I was paying attention. Mm -hmm. Actually, I started. I, I have a different process that I use when I when I teach. I'm trying to teach you the the standard way that people do it. I have this thing I do called cyclic pacing and leading, which is a little bit different. I don't want to talk about it now because it'll just confuse you. But literally, all I want you to do to understand the nuts and bolts of this exercise is pick any five random paces. Plug in a lead. Pick any four random paces. Plug in two leads. Plug in any three random paces, plug in three leads. And just guide the person where you want them to go. So again, just to start with the five, four, three, two, one. As you sit here, feeling the weight of your body in the chair, breathing in and out. But isn't that a lead? Feeling the weight of your body in the chair. Can you verify that you can feel the weight of your body in the chair? But doesn't it tell me, go feel the weight of your body in the chair? No, it's something you're going to do, you're going to check to see if it's true. Okay, I see what you're saying. Right? The moment you check to see if it's true, bing, credibility level goes up. Okay? Parsing goes down. Critical factor goes, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, this is okay. And it just goes in. Right? So, again, get really, really simple with this. Okay? If I were to say, and your legs are crossed, well, half of you would, would be like, no. And all of a sudden, I've created a message mismatch. Now you're going to start mismatching what I'm doing because what I say doesn't match your reality. Does that make sense? Okay. We want to shut the filters off. The only way to shut them off is to make sure that our credibility is impeccable. The way we do that is by getting really, really sensorially or cognitively verifiable. Right? It's a pretty safe bet that as you sit here listening to the sound of my voice, whether you're consciously doing it or not, you're unconsciously paying attention. And there's a part of your brain that goes, okay. Right? And then I'll show you how to make it even more, <clears throat> more all-encompassing. Okay? And what I want you to do is I want you to get with a partner. Another thing we want to do now is we also want to create an outcome. So let's say you're working with Barbara and you want to help her lose 15 pounds, okay? So you're doing this induction, and you start to go for predicate states. In other words, what states or sequence of states would be the natural continuum for her to cycle through to reach a point where she's easily able to change and create change? So you might say, as you sit here listening to the sound of my voice, hearing my words, noticing the, tone, the intonation as my voice fluctuates up and down, feeling the weight of your body in the chair, feeling yourself relax, and noticing how you're paying more attention to what I'm saying because you know that what I'm saying is directed at you. And because you know I'm here to help you, you can begin to relax even more. And the nice thing about learning to relax even more is that as you continue to relax, letting your shoulders kind of go, ah, that's right. Relaxation is a key to learning. And the times we learn best are when we're most relaxed and paying attention. Kind of like when you were a little kid and you came to school and maybe you were excited about learning something for the first time. And there was some subject or some thing that your teacher showed you or a book, you know, something you saw in a book somewhere that really excited you about learning, about being able to do something new. And for some mysterious reason, you got it like that. Sometimes it's something as simple as learning to flush the toilet or flicking on a light switch and learning that when the light switch went on one way, the light went on. And when the switch went off, well, the light turned off. But we learned it instantly. And there have been many times in our life when we've had those one trial learnings. Whether it was something great and complex or something very, very simple. The learning was fun. It was exciting. And it felt good to really own that. So as you think about those times, letting those feelings come flooding back, realize that you can still learn quickly. You can still learn deeply. 
and learn to change new things because most of the behaviors that we have, most of the activities we engage in are simply decisions we've made based on a positive outcome. And if we're holding on to things like weight or illness or limiting beliefs, it's not that those beliefs are bad. It's not that those beliefs mean something's wrong with us. It's just what we were thinking at the time based on the information that we had. And wouldn't that be true? If you think about it, most of what we believe was based on who we were and what we knew and what was going on in the environment at the time. But isn't there always something we don't know? Isn't there always some level of information that could change the way we look at things? So when you change your perspective, when you change how you see the world, and you realize that all that a belief is is a decision, it's just the way you were thinking at the time. And you can always change the way you were thinking, can't you? That's right. So as you go into that state of deep learning, learning how to change, learning how to experience the world in new ways, getting excited about the possibilities of tapping into your own mind, you just let go. Let your other than conscious mind open up like a flower. You ever see a flower open up? Follow the sun. It's kind of cool. And take in new ideas. Take in nourishing thoughts. Things that allow you to grow in the right directions and diminish things in other directions. Because that's how flowers work. When something no longer serves its purpose, well, it drops away. It goes away. And what's necessary remains. So just like the flower can follow the sun, our behaviors can follow our life. Shedding what's necessary as the situation changes. As new learnings, new opportunities arise. New ways of moving through the world as we learn and grow. And isn't that just a cool thing? Now you can come back to the room. <laughs> I lost the challenge. I know. Piece of I know. I know. <laughs> That's also fractionation. See, they heard me. Right? All I did was begin to just pace things and then leave. And then every so often I would come back to a few things that you couldn't argue with. The moment I find I give you something you can't argue with, everything that comes before it, true. Okay? After the fact. Many times, yeah. Because you can only analyze something while you're thinking about it. And as long as I keep talking, you'll keep processing. And again, when I start to go into lead land, there may be a certain point where, um, you know, it's too many leads. And I get a feeling for when that might be, and then I come back to something concrete. Like a flower. We've all seen a flower. And we all know that the flower follows the sun. And then I create a metaphor based on what flowers do. You see that the increments were small, and they were isomorphic. Actually, this one was, I think, uh, anthropomorphic? I forget. It's, it wasn't a human thing, but isomorphic means it's in person. Um, but I mirror a process. Taking in new things, shedding what's not necessary, just like the old leaves drop away. Right? I know what I mean at a neurological level. Her nervous system knows what I mean at a neurological level. Okay? And her, her brain will, and mind will interpret that in a way that's relevant through transderivational search. Okay? So, questions? No? You know, because if you think about it, flowers aren't really troubled by lack of confidence, are they? They just do what they do. And the result happens, right? Because they're programmed for success. They're programmed if they just do what's natural. 
kind of like guys, actually. The funny thing about relatively dumb guys is they usually have pretty good success with women because they don't overthink it. They just approach. They're not troubled. You ever notice that your dog isn't troubled by self-doubt? He has no self-worth issues because he has no ego. Cats are even a better example. <laughs> I could get into it. Don't get me started on cats, right? But uh, you know the you know the frame the whole idea of frame control. I think Orrin Klaff said it best in terms of frame control, but the difference between dogs and cats. Dog comes home from the pound or the animal shelter. He's a little puppy. And uh, the family's feeding him and clothing him and taking care of him and doing all these things. And the puppy goes, they're so wonderful. They're giving me everything. They must be God. Cat comes home from the pet shop. They feed it. They take care of it. They bathe it. The cat goes, wow. They're taking care of all my needs. I must be God. <laughs> Perception. Both are equally true. Which frame makes your life better? Which frame gets you more of what you want? Make sense? All frames are true. All right, I want you to break up into groups of two or three. I want you to string together any random paces. I don't, I mean, I don't even want them to be tangentially related. It could be everything from that, that wall is orange to that map is on the wall, you know, to the floor is some gray weird carpet color, right? Doesn't have to, there doesn't have to be any logic, rhyme, or reason to the paces. And then as we get more comfortable with this process, then of course the paces will tend to be more and more related, which makes it even more seamless, right? But try to stick as much as possible to the pa In fact, it, that's why I had you to write two separate lists, because it might actually help you to write five paces, one lead, four paces, two leads, and just read it. Make sense? You can also write sales copy this way. Okay. Go play. Make sure you tell your partner um, what goals you want to achieve. Like, you want to lose 15 pounds, or do you want to get rid of it? Do you want to really lose anything? Secret. We fight harder to keep something than we do to get something new. Zagarnik effect. Teach this, call it the Z technique in, in real world hypnosis. The human brain, the human nervous system is hardwired to experience more pain from losing something it currently has than it will experience pleasure of getting something it hasn't achieved yet. You will experience more pain from losing the dollar in your pocket than the pleasure you'll receive from getting a new dollar. So when you are helping people to remove something. You haven't seen me shock. <laughs> Well, you're not, well, anyway, you're not losing, you're buying, <laughs> okay? But if we're trying to, to save money, anyway, we, I'm beating the dead horse. Same for relationships, I'll experience more pain from losing a relationship than from gaining a new one. If it's something you value, yes. Most people will not leave a relationship because they're afraid the next one will be worse or there won't be another one. They, they don't leave a relationship because they're afraid that... That there won't be another one or the next one will be worse. Okay. That's self-esteem. That's self-worth issues. That's why people stay at lousy jobs and everything else, because they're afraid they can't replace what they have, or the next one will be worse. How, how do you flip that? Raise their self-esteem. Do you, we don't have to go into this right now, but do you have ways of doing that? Sure. Yeah. You see, most of our self-esteem is based on what we choose, what parts of ourselves we choose to look at and amplify. If you looked at the, in the mirror every day and, and just only focused on the things you liked, your life would change. But we don't. We don't. We focus on all the things that we think are lacking. 
because that's our natural hardwiring. That's how we're predisposed. Also, our, our, our socialization teaches us that too. Okay, our, the building blocks of our self-esteem are actually the voices of our primary authority figures from the time we're born up through about puberty. That's where our self-esteem comes from. We didn't ask for it. We didn't give permission for it. It was just stuff that got put in there by people who meant well, were doing the best they could under the situation or circumstances, but didn't know shit from Shinola either. Okay? Those are the building blocks for most of us. Does that mean we're stuck with it? No. But we do have to understand it in order to deal with it. Okay? Go play.